Hey guys, we are here at the United States Botanic Garden in Washington, D.C., and we're about to remove the outer spathe on the second corpse flower bloom of 2020. This is a Morphophallus titanum, and uh, yesterday it opened up, and you can see it kind of did a half opening here. And the spathe, that's this outer section, they're removing it to get down to the inside. So we'll, we'll pull over here because that's where all the flowers are. So at the, at the bottom of this big tall spadix here, which measured 107 inches yesterday at peak bloom, our tallest ever, a new height record for the garden. This is the collection of oh. flowers. Oh God, it's... <laughs> a little bit of uh, leftover smell, stink smell from yesterday. Yesterday it's it stinked, uh, had the stink because it was trying to attract pollinators, flies and carry on beetles you there. Look at this? Yeah, show us. So this is the inside of that spade, so you can see here. I'll help you out. Look at this beautiful color. Oh, oh nope. It didn't it didn't like the it is heavy guys. It's got its own weight and was not happy with it. But it kind of stops the color. <laughs> it's just coming to pieces, isn't it? It stops the color there because uh, it's using that red color as another method to potentially attract pollinators who might be interested in some rotting meat smell, which is what it's emitting uh, yesterday during that peak bloom. So right now, this is gardener Stephen Jones and he's cutting away portions of that uh, lower section of the spade because we're trying to set up a collection method to catch the pollen from the male flowers. And that's what these are up here. As they're immature right now, they're not yet releasing pollen. They wait until after the female flowers are finished being receptive for pollen so that they are not self-pollinating. And uh, we expect the pollen to be released, what, in the next day or so? Steve? Maybe tonight. Tonight. The, the flowers are hot right now. Ah. About 80, 80, 80 degrees, 82 okay. degrees. Wow, look at that. Look at how far up those flowers go. So we're going to aim to put, put a collar that goes right there, Steve. Yeah. You can see that's the remnants of the first bloom that we had a week ago. And we did pollinate these female flowers here uh, with pollen from three different cork flower plants that had been sent to us. And uh, that's those male flowers there that are finished and done from the previous time. And you can even see they've got little scars and holes there on the tops of them where they release the pollen. So we'll ex be expecting these to start releasing their pollen tonight. And um, it's going to be kind of yellow stringy little stuff. And we'll catch it. And the purpose for catching it is that we can send it to, um, I think this is going directly to Chicago Botanic Garden, right? As part of the conservation project that we're participating in. Um, these plants, the Morphophallus titanum, are endangered in the wild. It's estimated that less than a thousand of the specimens still exist in the wild. And so we and several other botanic gardens are partnering to help try to conserve this species in uh, botanic garden conservation projects so that we can cross pollinate the plants with known parent uh, plants. And so we are going to send this pollen back to Chicago so it can go into the freezer for when another botanic garden has a non-related corpse flower in bloom in the future. We'll look here. Looks like those might be a little pieces of pollen left over from the pollination yesterday. Yep. So they use paint brushes and, and painted on the pollen onto these female flowers here. So this particular plant had not bloomed before. It was four years old. Um, and we're not sure when it will bloom next. That's part of the both challenge and beauty about these corpse flower plants is that they kind of do their own thing whenever they're ready. So it can be as long to five to 10 to 20 years before it blooms again. It might bloom before that. Um, we'll be caring for it. it. Needs high heat and high humidity. Sounds like we just got a measurement here of, what was the diameter measurement there? Four and a half inches there. Eh? Okay. Check this out. So what, he's got a little heat measuring device here. So you can see, look at that. So that's those, uh, that's the male flowers there where you're seeing the red that are hotter than, especially see the blue down low, which is cool. So they are heating up, they are active. So it's calibrating and landing, landing around 80, looks like there in that section, 80, 81. Hmm. 
the entire um, the entire spadix kind of functions as a chimney of sorts uh, when it is stinking and heating up. Um, so on right the, now the male flowers are about 20 degrees warmer than the spadix. Look at that. So that's where the action's happening. That's called thermogenesis. They are creating heat. Um, and we know that these plants, um, like many in the, uh, the Arum family, can do this. Um, and they can help volatilize the compounds that create that stinky smell and push it further away from the plant to attract pollinators. I'll actually show you kind of what's down inside. We had one question of what's inside the spadix. And it's just hollow. There's not really a lot of anything. This is very just empty and, and just webby tissue, fibrous tissue, um, but it's essentially very hollow, uh, but it does have kind of a leathery um, feel, texture to that spadix. So right now they're working to prepare some catchment units. <laughs> These are the pieces that have been removed from the, the two corp flowers over the last two weeks. And um, I'm going to show you the old spadix while we're here. This is the old spadix off the first one. And you can kind of see here, still a very bumpy, leathery texture. You might can't even hear that. There you go. Clearly this one is dried out, but even when it was first removed and still kind of that, that yellowy golden color, um, it was, was quite leathery texture. So the team is trying something new here, um, using a pie tin to, which they've cut and they've measured the diameter of the spadix there. They're trying to set up a little bit more of a sturdy system to sit essentially at the base of those male flowers there and catch the pollen as it will dehiss or um, be emitted or, uh, coming out of those male flowers overnight tonight. You can watch along with us to see if our pollination was successful with updates posted at www.usbg.gov slash corpseflower.